Hopefully that is working. I apologize about the difficulties a moment ago. Um, we're going to give it a minute or two and see if anybody needs can find the new live feed. Gotta love our smartphone. There we go. I'm going to open that up and find the chat. Hopefully, like I said, you guys can jump on over. All right, and gotta love our modern day problems and issues. <laughs> All right. All right, so I'm gonna keep on going. Um, just to reiterate, this is the painting that I'll be doing for the San Diego Humane Society this afternoon. Ah, oh, awesome. Thank you guys for jumping back on and bearing with me through those difficult technical stuff. All right, so getting started. I'm gonna go back to the yellow and white and we're gonna kind of be, I'm gonna be creating these long horizontal brush strokes and we're gonna be filling in from kind of this area towards the bottom. And we will be building with other colors on top of this. And then we will have a little bit of blue and white sky in the top corner. Now, with any of my paintings, if you prefer one color compared to another, you want more of it in your background, feel free to switch out and add more of what you want for your painting. All right, and let me get live chat going. There we go, just in case you guys need to ask me a question so I can see it. And again, any frustrations, anything that's pissed you off, any of the technical difficulties I just had to go through, um, throw it into your painting. Uh, you usually feel a little bit better and with all the anxiety and craziness and uncertainty going on right now, painting is such a therapeutic outlet. So please continue to find your ways to paint. And if you're one of my first time painters, take a deep breath right now. Even if you're not a first time painter, take a deep breath and relax. It's all going to be okay. We're going to get through this together. All right. And I chose this angle more for the fact that you guys could see my palette and see the canvas while I'm painting. And then I don't have to worry about if I'm making a funny face uh, while I'm painting because I watched a few of the replays and it's didn't realize how often I did that. <laughs> All right, so now we're actually gonna grab more of the straight yellow and we're gonna be kind of putting it on the perimeter and overlapping the lighter yellow. When you overlap your colors, uh, you'll get to do a little bit of blending and this is called wet on wet blending. And where my darker yellow and my lighter yellow meet, I am using light pressure as I pull that darker yellow into the lighter yellow. And we'll kind of build on this uh, skill as we fill in the background. And as you're painting this, don't, get, don't fall in love too much with anything kind of on the bottom um, two inches because we will be putting our black silhouette uh, ground on there and then putting our dogs and cat on top of that. All right. And if you are painting at home on a stretched canvas, carry that color around the sides, the tops, and the bottom. And it looks really nice when it hangs on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. All right, and if you followed me before, this is a good time to take a progress photo. And you don't have to necessarily clean your brush. I'm gonna make kind of a sherbet orange, so I'm grabbing a little bit of orange and mixing it in with the white and yellow mixture. And you can kind of create your desired shade of sherbet um, or your desired shade of orange. And we're gonna be doing the same thing. I'll slightly paint on top of the yellow. And again, you'll notice how it mixes with that. And if you uh, have to mix your color a second or third time, don't stress about getting the exact same shade. Because when you do the wet on wet blending like this, it does change um, as you mix it with the color next to it. All right, again, just take a deep breath. It is a nice day outside. Uh, with everybody being at home, hopefully you are able to go outside, relax, take a walk, get some exercise, keeping your distance from everybody, um, but just finding a little adjustment to your routine. Ah, thanks, Jen, glad you like the new angle. Um, like I said, it's much easier for me to paint this way and then for you to see the plate and um, the painting. All right, so I'm actually gonna grab a little bit more orange. 
And I'm not going to grow too much to the top because I really want this rest of this canvas space up here to be the blue and the white mixture. So I'm going to be hanging out um, or placing my darker orange, my straight orange, on top of the sherbety orange. And if you would like to introduce red, you want something a little more stronger, a little more powerful, um, you can introduce red into your background. And just keep in mind that red's very powerful, a lot of our dark colors are. And a little bit of color, a little bit of pigment goes a long way. And it's okay if you don't blend everything in. It doesn't have to be smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just kind of your painting yoga for today. Just a daily painting. All right, if you do need to, you can wipe your brush off, maybe wipe off excess pigment. And if you need to go back and blend um, an area, that cleaner brush will help. So you do want to get everything that you want done to your kind of warm colors, your yellows, whites, uh, oranges, and even red if you choose to throw that in there. Then we're going to clean the brush out really good and we're going to fill up this top area with white and blue or shades of light blue. Now because we are painting wet into wet paint, when we get with that light blue, you actually want to be really conscious as you come up to the orange because blue and orange are complementing colors. And if you mix them together, they actually create a kind of dark, slightly ugly color. Same if you mix blue with yellow, you're gonna get a bit of a green. And unless you want that in your background, be very careful as you are coming up to your yellow. A trick that I have found um, for my beginner painters is we're gonna take a little bit of white and right on the perimeter, we're gonna put maybe a quarter inch border of white next to that orange or next to whatever colors you've got on there. And then this makes it a little bit easier to blend the light blue mixture into the white compared to blending it into the orange. And I apologize at home, um, putting white on a white canvas is not exciting at all. You can't really see anything. Um, so you just wanna put a slight perimeter of white above your orange. All right, so now we're gonna make a medium blue. So I'm gonna use that white, pull a little bit aside. Tiny amount of blue goes a long way to make your light blue. And you may have a different shade of light blue than I do, totally okay. Um, if you even wanna do a full on sunset, you are more than welcome to fill up your entire canvas with your sunset color um, or even different colors. All right, so now fill in this in. And if you would like to try a different brush stroke, maybe try the X marks um, or using the whiter part of your brush, I'm gonna stick with the same uh, kind of horizontal brush strokes that I've been making, just so that way it kind of keeps the consistent feel throughout my whole background. And we're gonna fill this whole space in with this light blue. And again, as you come up next to the white paint where it's meeting the orange, that light pressure and again, just using that wet on wet blending technique to soften the light blue into the white. All right. And if you mix your color a second or third time and it's a slightly different shade, that's okay. Don't stress about it. You can just mix it in because we will be putting darker shades of blue on top of this in a few moments. All right, and I actually kind of like this angle too because I can push against the, camp, the panel. Um, I know that you're seeing everything. So I think I might stick with this for most of the live feeds. And then it's a little sim more similar to what I have for my YouTube videos, the angle. So I can keep a bit more consistency. So I appreciate you guys that have been here uh, this week, letting me get comfortable for the shoot this afternoon. Um, and just helping me step out of my comfort zone in this crazy, crazy time right now so I can move forward and do what I need to do. So as you're approaching the perimeter or the border of where the uh, green, ugh, I can talk today, of where the orange and the blue are meeting, if you want, if this big brush is getting too much, move down to the small medium flat brush. And again, with that light pressure, you can kind of soften where those two meet and if you need to wipe the brush off, um, go ahead and do that. The more that you paint, the more comfortable 
um, blending this transition will become. So if it's not looking the way you want to right now, or maybe you've got a color growing into the blue or the orange, be kind to yourself. This is just maybe possibly your first painting or you're still learning a lot. If you need to, you can take a paper towel, wipe off some of the color that you don't want, and then reapply the color you do want on there. And as always, if you feel like finger painting, go right ahead. All right, so I'm actually gonna keep with this uh, medium flat brush and I'm gonna make a darker blue, uh, kind of a more of a medium blue. And I want you to go about two or three shades darker than what you just painted for your light blue background. And again, keeping with those kind of long horizontal brush strokes and the wet on wet blending, just applying it right in there. Very therapeutic. Maybe let's do a little bit down here. And remember, as you are painting, you're about two feet in front of your canvas. So get in the habit of getting out of your chair and looking at your painting from five to 10 feet away. And it does look entirely different from that distance compared to two feet in front of your face. All right, actually, I'm gonna fix, let's work on this area. And then I'm gonna be going in with the straight blue and kind of getting a darker, uh, top left hand corner. All right. So again, just now grabbing that direct straight blue, I'm going to slap it up in that top left corner. Um, I actually put quite a bit on there, so we're going to wipe it off a little bit and I'm going to be blending that in there. So I have a really kind of dark top, uh, to my background colors. I'm actually going to grab a little bit more. Let's throw some into here. And same thing, if you end up putting too much on there, you can wipe your paint off with a paper towel and then reapply. I think I'm actually gonna clean the brush and I'm gonna go in with some white paint in the top left-hand corner, or top right-hand corner. I'm totally dyslexic. Completely okay to laugh at me. I'm laughing and you guys just can't see it right now. <laughs> All right, so I did clean my brush. I'm grabbing that white paint because I do want it a little bit lighter on this corner. Slapping it right on there. And blending it in. And sometimes it happens, you get a little excited about slapping a color on there and maybe it lands in a place you didn't want it, like it did over here. So this is what my, uh, one of my favorite art instructors, Bob Ross, loved watching his videos. We call these happy accidents. So if this happens and you get a color somewhere you don't need to, um, either work with it and blend it into your painting or wipe it off with a paper towel and reapply your color. So with painting, you don't need to stress about things being perfect. And the more that you can kind of just go with the flow of maybe some of the randomness that happens, the happier you're going to be with your painting process. And really, the only way to fail at painting these days is to not paint at all. So just the fact that you're painting makes you already very successful. All right. So get your background to where you like. If you want to go back to any area, if you want more orange, more reds, more yellows, um, feel free to do that. Because our next step, and if you are doing this at home, I do recommend that you pause the video and let your background dry before you move into painting the black silhouette design. And with that, I'm actually gonna grab a sheet of paper and we're gonna practice our design with the brush and black paint before we move into painting on our actual canvas. So here, yep, looks like it can be seen on there, perfect. We're gonna be practicing step one, step two, step three, step four. And again, this gives our background a little time to dry and it's gonna give you practice with the brush. And I do recommend the small pointy brush and play with your pressure. Light pressure is gonna give you a bit of a skinnier line where more pressure is gonna give you a bit of a fatter line. All right, so again, we're starting with step one, making this kind of oval or upside down U shape. 
Then we're gonna put the head of our cat or dog on here. And if you wanna give them pointy ears, it's gonna be a triangle. A floppy ear is gonna be a box with a uh, little lip on it or a cap on it. And then for our dog, he's got um, his little haunches that he's sitting on. And then we would fill this in. So on your scrap sheet of paper, I want you to practice as many times as you need to before you move into painting on your canvas. And again, that just gives you um, good practice. And you'll possibly even notice that after you do this little doodle on your painting, you may start doodling it when you're doing other things and you've got a pen or a pencil in your hand. If you would like to do a cat, again, we're just gonna change uh, the ears and you will make your cat a little bit smaller, but same steps. That first little oval shape, I'm gonna give him a circle for his head, and the cat will keep with triangles for the ears. And I actually like to give the cat a bit of a tail. And then we'll fill that in. And hopefully you guys are just finding it nice and relaxing, watching all of this, enjoying the process escaping from your day. All right, so like I said, you can actually paint this as many times as you want. Use the front and back of your paper, and then we'll be moving back into our canvas. We're gonna put the ground on there, then we'll put our dogs and cats, then the grass and possibly the birds. All right, save that for later. Pull this one back. Looks like I've got it all in frame. Cool. All right. All right. So this one I'm actually going to move back up to the medium flat brush as we put the ground on here. And again, yours can be a little different than mine. If you have a specific ground formation you want to put in there, go right ahead. All right. So what I like to do is grab some black paint and go over to the left hand side, maybe about two or three inches from the bottom, maybe more, put a little mark. Then we're gonna go over to the right-hand side, do the same thing, put a little mark. Then we're actually gonna connect the dots and I want you to pretend like you're making a smiley face and smile as you do it. And mine's kind of sloppy, that's okay, grab more paint. And if you are like mine and you're painting wet paint into wet paint, apply your black pretty thick. But we are gonna fill in that space from that smile line to the bottom of your canvas. And again, carry that over the bottom of the canvas if you are covering your edges. Yay, thanks for coming. Good to see you, Linda and Jen. You guys have left comments for me. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely take a watch and then rewind it. Um, and like I said earlier, I'll be doing this again for the San Diego Humane Society, their live Facebook post this afternoon at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So feel free to check out the replay. I'm assuming um, you'll get to see me in that video. I'm not quite sure their camera angle. But this week was good practice for getting down to about a 30 minute painting even though we had some technical difficulties with this one today. All right, and also on my YouTube channel, there is this painting, um, I think I call it Sunset Doggies, and it's done where I do the background with a palette knife. So I wanted to get both those videos on there so you had options. And if you've never painted with a palette knife, check out that video. And you, like I said, you can paint your background with the knife and then you will come in and do your silhouette of the dog and the cat with a brush. All right, so moving into my dog and cat, I'm gonna start with, do a pretty good sized dog and then a smaller one. And keep in mind that you generally want your silhouette looks strongest when it's on more of a lighter background color. So I do like to keep my design um, a little bit closer to the lightest area on my background. 
And because my paint's still wet, I'm just going to fill this in. We've got a very, very healthy dog here. Um, I think maybe he's a lab. He's a pretty big boy. <laughs> All right. And let's give this guy, give him a nice shaped head. And again, as you're doing this, you can play with the pressure of your brush. And if you need to move down to the small pointy brush, feel free to do that. And we're gonna give him a little flap for his ear and a pointy ear. And again, using that light pressure, since I am painting super thick, let's give him a bit, his little haunches that he's sitting on. Nice. And then for the cat, I am actually gonna move down to the smaller brush. And these are some pretty cool animals because they actually, cats and dogs are friends. I have a few friends that um, have that in their household and it's really cute to see the cats and dogs playing together. Not a normal sight that we see every day. All right, so moving into our cat, same, same process. We'll just change the ears and we'll give the cat a tail. So we're gonna circle for his head. Get those pointy ears. And on the cats, I like to give them a tail. Again, it's just a silhouette. It does not have to be perfect. It's amazing how much our brain fills in the details as we step away. So again, getting that habit of walking away from your painting and looking at it from a distance. All right, so for that grass, I'm actually gonna clean this brush off again. I'm gonna move back up to the wide flat brush, the large flat brush. And I'm gonna use kind of the width of the brush to make the brush strokes. So I will be holding the brush sideways, making little dash marks. And imagining that each dash mark is a blade of grass. So you're kind of moving your brush in the direction that the grass would be growing. And you do want to overlap these brush strokes and hopefully you can see that I'm kind of moving my brush in different directions. Again, you want to make sure or remember that this is grass that you're making. So grass overlaps. Think about how you see it in nature. You do want to kind of use light pressure to keep skinnier lines. And fatter, more pressure gives you a little bit wider lines and possibly that could be really healthy grass. I do remember living in the deep south in, um, I think it was Alabama, and it just had such thick, luscious grass everywhere. It was so fun to walk through barefoot. All right, and in the other video on my YouTube channel for the palette knife background, on that one it has us putting a tree in there. So you can kind of switch between both videos if you want some options, or you can stick with just the grass. And when I've taught this class before, I've had people after the black dried, they put a little heart in there, maybe they put a collar on their dog or cat. Um, some people wrote their name on it. So feel free to switch and make this painting unique and what you want with it. All right, so whenever you are done with that, and again, you do not have to keep up with my video, pause it as needed. If you want to add birds in the sky, um, going back to the small pointy brush and kind of back to what we used to do in school, make a little M, there's one bird, bird number two, and remember they fly in different directions too, and they're different sizes. So maybe there's a small, smaller birds up close, uh, farther away and larger birds up close. And I live in San Diego, so I love seeing the pelicans fly in formation. If you want to put an airplane in your sky, if you want to put a blimp with a message on there, please make it your own. And if you do adjust it, um, even if you don't adjust it and you paint what I paint, please send me a picture of what you paint. Um, I get very excited when I receive those emails and I got a few this morning. So really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to hang with me. Um, as well as send me images of what you paint. So 
All right, not bad. Um, yep, and it looks like it streamed for about 24 minutes, so kept it under the 30 minute mark. So I thank you guys so much for checking out this demo, all your support just by watching the videos, sharing it with your friends. Um, feel free to check out my online school, Paint with Lovejoy. And if you are inclined to uh, be financially supportive of me, if you jump over to the Patreon page, and I'll put links below in the description box, and donate $2, $5 a month, it helps me continue to produce these videos. So thanks so much for uh, coming by and checking it out. Glad you guys like it. Thinks it looks cute. Um, send me your pictures of what you paint. Have your kids paint this. But find your creative outlets in this crazy time right now. So until tomorrow, or unless you join me for the San Diego Humane Society feed, I will see everybody tomorrow. Thanks so much. Have a great day.